So I finally got a bit of sleep and this is where we left last tutorial. As you remember, I cached out our animation down here using a file cache node and now I checked load from disk to just work on the cache that we already have written out and not have to re-simulate the whole thing again and again. So when I scrub through this animation and go to some later parts here, one thing that's bugging me is that this simulated pillow is moving off out of frame here. And yes, I could be tweaking that simulation parameters in my vellum solver or using a few wrangles. However, sometimes your simulation takes really long to simulate and you don't want to run it over again. So are there any methods of fixing this post-simulation? And of course there are. The idea being here that I want the center point of my simulation and counteract the movement of this center. And to get the center of this simulated geometry, I can use the bounding box hidden under the bound sop. So let's wire this in here and highlight our bound sop. And you can see this generates, well, a box around my simulation geometry into which it fits. If we scrub, we can see this box is moving with my simulation geometry. And I could also orient this so Houdini tries to fit and rotate the bounding box as good as possible. For our case, I'm going to uncheck oriented bounding box. As the main motion I want to counteract here is just a translation. However, what I want is a transform attribute. And if we middle mouse on this here, we can see that the transform attribute is a single detail attribute, giving me exactly what I was looking for, namely the translation of the whole bounding box. That means the center of this. So how can I apply this translation to my file cache? Again, middle mouse buttoning on the bounding box here, you can see this is 16 floats. So let's have a look at this in the geo spreadsheet here on the detail attributes. These are those floats and only those three values here are not zero or one. And what we have here, if you haven't figured by now, is a four by four transformation matrix consisting of the translation and these values would encode a rotation or a skew if we had something on here. However, as we unchecked oriented bounding box, the bounding box just sits along our global axis. If however we checked oriented bounding box, we can see we are now getting rotations as well which we don't want. So how do I apply this transformation matrix onto my geometry here? I'm going to use a point wrangle. Main geometry goes into the first slot and my bounding box with the transformation matrix into the second slot. So first let's look up this transformation matrix here, creating a matrix calling it X form for transformation. And let's use the detail function to load in this detail attribute here from our second input slot, the one with the ID one. The attribute is called X form. And that should be it. So we're just loading in the calculated transformation matrix from here, not applying it yet. The way you apply a transformation matrix is not by adding or subtracting it like you do with a vector, but multiplying it. In this case, I want to multiply it onto my points positions in the mesh. So I'm going to do V at P for my mesh point positions times equals X form. And now we made it worse because we just applied the transform that we calculated here. That means the offset again onto our mesh. So we offset it two times. And you might feel tempted to think that if we multiply our point with our matrix here to move our geometry in this direction, why not divide our point by our matrix to move it back? And we can try that. However, that is not a valid operation. Instead, what you do to quote unquote negate this transformation matrix is invert it. What we're going to do by just using our transform matrix that we just created and setting it to its inverse by using the invert function inverting the matrix itself. And now we are moving back the whole geometry to the center. And if we scrub through the timeline, we can see our geometry now stays centered. Let's zoom in here a bit, reset this, save this and render out a play blast. So after this is rendered out, let's have a look at this. And I think that's mostly looking fine. However, at the beginning, it seems to wiggle around a bit too hectically. And in this version is kind of subtle, but in other simulations that I run, the bounding box and transformation matrix compensated a bit too strongly or too visibly in the beginning. And this pillow was bouncing around more violently. You can get an idea of this in the beginning here. So how would we get rid of this? What we need to do is we need to filter the transformation matrix we're generating in here with a bounding box to smooth out the bumps at the beginning. Enter one of the most hardcore old school parts of Houdini, chops. Let's drop down a chop net. Chops is the part of Houdini that's really like signals processing, which has its advantages and disadvantages. And to bring in our transformation, our X form matrix into the chop net, I need to promote this to be an attribute that sits on a point. So what I'll do is drag this down, use an attrib promote, wire this in here and promote from detail to point my X form attribute. So if I highlight this middle mouse on it, we can see we now have a transform on here. However, we currently have eight points, but as we have only one 
transform value that used to be a detail attribute, we can get rid of most of the points so that we're only left with one point. We're gonna do that using a last node. You could use a delete as well, setting this to work on points and deleting everything, but not the zero. So that leaves me with one single point, the point number zero that has a position and a transform attribute here. Now, just to make selection a bit easier, let's attach a null, call this one out underscore X form. And let's head into our chop net here. To bring in this point with my transformation data, I'm gonna use a geometry node here, which imports geometry from SOP level. I need to point this node to a SOP that I wanna import. So let's click here and by attaching this null that we called out underscore something, the null gets listed on top here. So let's select that. And I want to import my X form attribute. Let's highlight this and go over to the motion effects view. That's where usually my values will be plotted. However, there are no values plotted currently and you can see the exclamation mark here. So what's going wrong? Again, this is the kind of old school part of Houdini that in my opinion would massively benefit from an update and make this part of Houdini so much more useful. So side effects, if you're watching this, please update chops. What I have to do here is I'm gonna rename my transform matrix into individual channels whose names I have to specify here in the rename scope slot. And this slot only has three rename tokens for 16 values. Remember, this is a four by four matrix. So let's specify 16 rename tokens here. So we're gonna do using another syntax, again, old school Houdini. So let's call the new channels here, X form, and then the brackets zero to 15. So now we're importing 16 channels, starting with X form zero, going to X form 15. Also, I want these values coming in here to be animated as I want to smooth out animated values. So I'm gonna set the method to animate it which now shows up another downside of chops. In order to display the values over time here, it has to read in my whole animation, which is the 240 frames that I cached out. And of course, as this is old school Houdini, this is single threaded. So let's skip through this. And after we gained an understanding of what eternity really means, we can now see we imported those curves here. So let's zoom out a bit and you can see it's those jaggies at the beginning here, those bumps that I wanna smooth out further. To do so, I'll attach a filter node to my geometry here. And let's set this visibility flag here. So if we bypass this, we can now see the unsmoothed and the smoothed version of this. Again, for better readability, let's attach a null, call this one out underscore filtered. And let's also check its visibility flag. All right, let's go up one level and let's import those filtered values that we just generated back into my geometry stream here, for which I'm gonna use a channel node, which is there to import chops channels into my geometry here. I need to select the node from which I want to import those channels. Again, as I call it out underscore something, it's listed on the top of my list here, selecting this. And as previously, this should be animated values. And my channel scope, this is now the channel names that I set up in here in the chop net in the geometry node down here. So let's just copy this, go up again, and in channel set my channel scope to this. And the attribute scope just means which attribute name to use for this, which is X form. So let's highlight this, go to our scene view, middle mouse on this and that seemed to have worked perfectly. And now let's wire this into our point wrangle instead of our unfiltered values. Let's highlight the point wrangle. And there's not much happening here because we're trying to look up the detail attribute transform. However, currently this is on our point here on the single point that's left in this stream. So instead of the detail here, let's use a point lookup function and this one now needs the points number from which we wanna look up this attribute. In our case, there's only a single point having a point number of zero. So now we're back at this. Let's just scrub through here. So the general function is still there. Let's reset this and play blast it again. So after this has rendered out, let's play it. And we can see we got rid of most of the bumpiness here. Let's close this and one neat trick after we set up the chop net and filtered those values here is to just drop down a file cache again caching out the values that we load and write back onto the single point here. Just save this to disk because next time you load this setup, Chops again will go through the whole sequence here, loading in all the files from one to 240, smoothing the point values out here and writing them back. So that takes a good while. So once you're happy with what you filtered out, file cache it. It's not gonna be the biggest cache in the world for a single point. I'm not sure, but this might be the first time that we had touched Chops in any of our tutorials. One of the main reasons for that is that it shows its age. And I think it's a really low hanging fruit for side effects to update and turn into a powerhouse together with cops that is. Nevertheless, at its current state, it's still useful, I think, allowing you to manipulate animation curves or simulated values after you run a simulation. 
So that's it for today. If you'd like to know more about Houdini or just want to support us and like what we're doing, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And for everyone already supporting us over there, thanks so much, guys. With a very special thank you going out to Important Looking Pirates, Patrick Fillion, Rafik Anadol, and Chris Abair. Thanks so much, guys. And I think next week we're going to look at shading and rendering this. And until then, it's cheers and goodbye.